Introduction Friends, as we all know that we need energy for performing various daily activities. We get this energy from the food that we eat. So we can say that nutrition is a process by which all living organisms take food and utilize it to get energy. Both animals and plants are living organisms. Like animals, plants also require energy for their life activity. Thus, nutrition is an important life process of all living organisms. Dear friends, now let's know about the mode of nutrition. There are two types of nutrition modes. Autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition. But what are they? The mode of nutrition in which organisms make food themselves from simple substances is called autotrophic nutrition. And these organisms called autotroph. Green plants are the examples of autotrophs. The mode of nutrition in which animals and many other organisms take in ready-made food prepared by the plants is called heterotrophic and these organisms are called heterotrophs. Human, lion, tiger, etc. are the examples of heterotrophs. As we know, that green plants synthesize their own food. But do you also know that how they synthesize their own food? Actually, green plants make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process by which green plants synthesize their own food from the carbon dioxide and water in the presence of chlorophyll and solar energy. Now you know that in plants, water, minerals and carbon dioxide are raw materials for the synthesis of food. Do you also know that how do plants obtain these raw materials from the surroundings? And how do they transport them to the food factories of the plant? Water and dissolved minerals are absorbed directly from the soil through roots and sent to the leaves by the means of many small vessels present in the stem. These vessels run throughout the root, the stem, the branches and the leaves. They form a continuous path or passage for water and minerals to reach the leaf. Likewise, carbon dioxide from air is taken in through the tiny or small pores present on both surfaces of the leaves. Such pores are called stomata. These pores are surrounded by guard cells. After reaching to the leaf, carbon dioxide and water react in the presence of sunlight to form carbohydrate. The carbohydrate ultimately converted into the starch which gets stored in the different parts of the plants. Therefore, the first food product is formed during the photosynthesis is starch. Starch is also an example of carbohydrate. In this process, oxygen is also released. Therefore, the process of photosynthesis can be represented as carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight gives carbohydrate plus oxygen. In the presence of sunlight, carbon dioxide and water gives carbohydrate and oxygen releases in this process. Till now we have learnt about the photosynthesis process, but now the question is, what is its significance? Photosynthesis is an important and vital process for life on this planet. This process helps in the conversion of solar energy into organic matter. Hence, photosynthesis links the physical and biological world. It is the primary source of organic food for all living forms 
either directly or indirectly. It also helps in purifying air and maintaining the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the ecosystem. Photosynthesis In this module, you will learn about the basics of photosynthesis. All living things require food. Humans and animals eat other animals or plants as food. But plants cannot eat like humans or animals. Plants obtain food by preparing it on their own by a process called photosynthesis. Only green plants carry out photosynthesis. The word photosynthesis is made up of two words, photo and synthesis. Photo means light and synthesis means making or putting together. During photosynthesis, the leaves trap sunlight and use it to make sugar molecules like starch. Light energy is changed into chemical energy which is stored in the starch molecules. To carry out photosynthesis, plants require four things. Light energy, chlorophyll, carbon dioxide and water. Photosynthesis begins with light striking the leaves of plants. Both sunlight and artificial light, such as from lamps, are suitable for photosynthesis. Chlorophyll is a green pigment found in chloroplasts present in the cells of leaves. The chloroplasts absorb and store the energy from light. The stored energy is then further utilized in the process of food manufacture. Carbon dioxide and water serve as the raw materials for photosynthesis. Plants absorb carbon dioxide from the air. The carbon dioxide enters plants through pores called stomata present on the surfaces of their leaves. From the stomata, the carbon dioxide travels to the chloroplasts where it combines with water to form glucose. The combining of carbon dioxide and water utilizes the energy stored in the chloroplasts. Plants absorb water from the surrounding soil with the help of root hair present on their roots. Water absorbed by the roots is then transported to the leaves through the stem. Here is an equation that summarizes the process of photosynthesis. The glucose produced during photosynthesis is carried through special tubes to different parts of a plant. The above diagram shows the complete process by which food is prepared by green plants during photosynthesis. In this module, you have learnt the following. Green plants prepare their food by a process called photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, light energy trapped by leaves is changed into chemical energy. Plants require four things for photosynthesis. Light energy, chlorophyll, carbon dioxide and water. Chloroplasts contain the green pigment chlorophyll. They absorb and store light energy which is utilized in the process of food manufacture. Carbon dioxide enters the leaves through pores 
called stomata from the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide reaches chloroplasts and combines with water to form glucose. Formation of glucose utilizes energy stored in chloroplasts. Plants absorb water from soil through the root hairs present on roots. Water is then transported to leaves through stem. In this video, we will be starting about the stomata and the section through a leaf. See, we all know that plants make their own food. They are the producers. The process through which the plants make their own food is known as photosynthesis. Now, leaves are the food factors of plant. The synthesis of food in plants occur in leaves. Therefore, all the raw material must reach there. Water and minerals present in the soil are absorbed by the root and transported to the leaves. Carbon dioxide from air is taken through the tiny pores present on the surface of the leaves. These pores are surrounded by guard cells. Such pores are called stomata. So let's see the stomata. Now this is the diagram of stomata. It is the you know opening through which the carbon dioxide from the air is taken in the these pores in the leaves are called stomata and these are surrounded by these guard cells can you see these cells these are the guard cells now this part is known as stomata which is open stomata that air they are taking in then this is chloroplast cell wall this is cell wall stomata nucleus vacuole right so this is how the stomata looks and this is the closed stomata when the air is not taken inside right so carbon dioxide from air is taken in through the tiny pores present on the surface of the leaves. These pores are called these pores are specially surrounded by guard cells and such pores are called stomata now this is a pore this is the opening so this is known as your stomata it is surrounded by the guard cells and there is a vacuole then nucleus cell wall and chloroplast in this. Now see the leaves of the plant helps to prepare the food. So one section of the leaf is stomata that we have started about. Now let's see the vertical section through a leaf. Now how the leaf looks like from inside. Now there is a green pigment in the leaf known as chlorophyll. Can you find out where the chlorophyll is in this figure? Right. Now, as there is no, uh, nothing like a chlorophyll, so let me tell you that this part, this is chlorophyll. In the leaf. Right. Now this chlorophyll, it helps leaves To capture the energy of sunlight. See, we all know that plant prepare, uh, uh, plant can prepare their food in the presence of sunlight as well as they require water and carbon dioxide to prepare the food. Right? 
Now, uh, there is a green pigment in the leaves which make it green is the chlorophyll. It helps to capture the energy of the sunlight. This energy is used to synthesize or prepare food from carbon dioxide and water. Since the synthesis of food occurs in the presence of sunlight, it is known as photosynthesis. Now, this is the vertical section of the leaf, how the leaf looks like. These are wax cuticles. Upper epidermis, palisite cell, then uh, here it is air space which, through which the air can come and go. Then now here are the spongy cells, lower epidermis, then stomata, guard cells. We have studied the, how stomata looks like in the uh, previous slide. So this is how the leaf is. Do download our Scholars Learning app and enjoy the learning experience with us. Do you know that leaves of plants produce glucose through photosynthesis? The excess glucose is then converted into starch, which is the reserved food material in plants. Let us do a small experiment to test the presence of starch in leaves. We need a leaf, boiling water, alcohol, iodine solution, test tube, spirit lamp. Take a leaf from a plant that has been exposed to sunlight for several hours. Place the leaf in boiling water. This will kill the leaf, disrupt the cell membrane and soften the cell walls allowing the iodine to enter the cells and react. Now put the leaf in a test tube and cover it with alcohol. Keep the test tube in the boiling water. The chlorophyll slowly dissolves into the alcohol. Note that alcohol turns green. Removal of chlorophyll will help us observe the color change of iodine clearly. Place the bleached leaf in a petri dish. Pour iodine solution over it. Note the color of the leaf. It changes to dark green. This is because iodine combines with starch present in the leaf and forms a violet colored complex. This shows that starch is present in leaves. Now cover a leaf with a black paper for a couple of days and do the same test. See if it still has starch.